So, uh, what did you like in this story, and um, did you know it before? Uh, before to. Oh, yeah. Um, do you mind if I come nearer? Is it okay for the video? Mm -hmm. If I come nearer, is it yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, I did know the story before I wrote the script, <laughs> but I have to admit I had nearly forgotten about it. Um, I was doing some research about um, double suicide, cases of double suicide in general, and so I came across a, um, a little article about this German poet, Heinrich von Kleist, and I was fascinated um, because I was reading that he asked different people if they would want to die with him. And I immediately thought that's very strange, it's actually not what you expect from, a, from this romantic idea of double suicide out of love. So I got interested and I thought uh, maybe this is going to be a very absurd film and now I would say even it's a film about the dark side of love. <laughs> Have you thought to, to make a, a biopic about uh, Heinrich? No. No. No, I'm not. I mean, the film is not a biography and it's even not a psychological film. It's not, for example, it doesn't explain at all why the poet wants to die. What is his depression about? You, you never know this during the film. It's, it's more a film like a fairy tale. It's about. Uh, an idea and and maybe the idea is this eternal and everlasting truthful love which is a very romantic idea and the film somehow um, shows the reality of it what happens to this idealist idea as soon as it tries to become reality so, um I read that you took some liberties uh, about the story. Uh, can you explain why? You mean liberties uh, concerning the, the two the, story? Yes. 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 Um, I, I was really trying to focus on one special issue, an aspect of, of, um, of that story about the German poet. And if you want, um, it's really a film about absurdity and also misunderstanding in love. So as soon as I understood that this is the, the red line or the hot spot of my film, I, I easily could decide which of the biographical details are more interesting and which are not interesting for my story. And those who are not interested, I just left them out. And as the film is not a biography, I think this is this was actually the best thing to do. I'm also not very interested in um, well-made uh, period pictures. They are mostly boring, so I didn't want to go step into that trap <laughs> to make a nice historical film. <laughs> uh, how did you choose the cast? Um, also, during the casting, it was important to find actors that don't um, portray um, like an, um, a romantic or tragic or historic yeah. person. I asked them to be very lively, to be very nowadays, to, to act and speak very casual in a very everyday-like manner, so that the film becomes um, that it develops this um, this side that is not um, frozen historic cinema, but something that we can relate to. Uh, did you meet some real cells before the shooting? Did I meet uh, what? Uh, real cells. Uh, ah, real cells. Yeah. Um, um, the the way I work, normally the process of casting takes a very long time. Okay. The casting takes maybe, I don't know, six or seven or eight months. And during that period I, um, I look for the, the actors, for the, for the roles, but I also um, sort of rehearse when I think this actor could be the right actor for Heinrich. 
but maybe there are two actresses for Henriette, then we rehearse different scenes with this couple and that couple, and this for all the roles, because it's an ensemble. So in the end of the casting, we mostly have rehearsed all the scenes, and then I stop rehearsing. So I don't, before we do the shooting, there is no rehearsal in the artistic sense, it's a rehearsal, um, a very technical rehearsal that we do because the framing is very precise. I tell the actors in which scene will, you will be there, you will be there, you walk over there, so it's a very technical rehearsal. Yeah, but when we, we watch the movie we have the, the impression that it's like a, a play, mm -hmm. so it was a um, uh, when you decide to, to film the movie, you want you want that it looks like a, like play. a play. Yes, I wanted yeah. it to look like a play. <laughs> I think um, part of the of the message of the film is yes. that the characters um, they are actors. Everyone. <laughs> of the persons in the film is playing a role, the role of his life, if you want. And, and probably that's something that I experience in my life also, that um, every person has different roles. You always act according to which role you're playing at the moment. I'm the film director now, you ask me questions, I give the answers. <laughs> One hour later, you will be with someone else who is totally different for you, so you will be another person. I will be another person talking to my child or talking to you. So that is interesting. Um, who am I then? Am I, is it that the true Jessica Hausner that you see now? Or is it the other one that says, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, that is not, not very obvious. Or, or if you want, every person has very many different Person. So having this this mise en scène that gives that shows the people that as actors in their own life <laughs> is trying to give you this feeling of um, like the the reality is not a hundred percent sure you are maybe not yourself. And so uh, did you work with storyboards? Yes. Yes. Can you explain? Yeah. Um, I, at first I, I write a script, but um, most of the scripts that I write are not um, very detailed. It's just that I write down the, the, the dialogues and the scenes, but I don't give any psychological um, details about the actors or the film. Um, and then I I draw a storyboard and when I do that I really try to find the right style for the film, um, also the rhythm. For example, when I draw the storyboard, some of the scenes that were in the script are deleted, others become much longer than they were in the script, so the whole script um, changes according to the storyboard because the vis visuals, like, they tell their own story. And suddenly, for example, a dialogue or a scene is not necessary anymore. Uh, during the movie, there is uh, a few music, only the piano, what this song thing. Yes. So, uh, so uh, was, is what, was it your choice to... To don't, have only on don't screen really, music, yeah. yes. Yes, I, I, for this film I thought it's, um, the music is like, a, it's a, a, a dramatic means, it's a, I never use music just as a background okay. or to emphasize some emotions. I don't, I'm not interested in that. If I use music also in my other film, it's always um, in the scene and it's always an own, has an, it's an own character, the music. It's an own dramatic uh, aspect. Sometimes with the music I tell a story, like in this film, the, the text of the song 
tell a story, but also the length of the songs tell a story. Because they show um, in, a, in a real time version the evening of, of 1811. What was it like in 1811 to spend an evening? And that's why I chose to, to show the whole length of the song to really give you a, a realistic feeling about it. So, the why did you choose that uh, French title? Um, the French title, actually, Amour Fou is a saying also in German language. Also in German, you say Amour Fou. And, and it was very much used in the beginning of the 19th century in Germany because at that time, actually, the, this idea of, of romantic love and truthful love that lasts for a whole lifetime became very important for the Prussian or the German society. Um, and, and that's why I used this title, it's ironic, because of course my film, it is talking about Amon Fu, but Amon Fu is in your head. The idea of a, of a dramatic love is in the head of this character Heinrich, but the reality shows the not so great side of love, the more egoistic side and the ridiculous one, the realistic one. And uh, what means what means amour fou to you? Well, that that means actually. What, you mean in general or in that film? No, for you in general. I, I don't have a special relation yeah. to it. I mean, I think in general it means um, a love that is, goes beyond the borders of convention. That's the way the saying is used. But in this film, of course, it's an uh, ironical use of the, of the saying. Can you talk about the, the importance of the costumes in the, in the movie? Um, I, I always have, um, have uh, I always um, gave, <laughs> looking for word, <laughs> um, costumes have always been important for my films. The whole staging of the film is always important for me because I like to create very strong visuals and I like to tell a story that is more like a fairy tale. It's um, like a, um, a very specialized sort of realism. Um, so the costumes and the settings have always been very important for me. Um, because I'm trying to, to create in the colors and in the style something artificial. And so it, it was very comfortable for me to make a historical film because um, we could create um, a lot of the settings in the studio and the costumes have been made for this film and it was very much pleasure to do that all. <laughs> Uh, the the animals are important too in the movie. Yes. So uh, you can see a lot of dogs. And so yes. What can you tell <laughs> us about that? Um, I was um, I was trying, as I maybe said before, I I try to create a, a special style and also a, a sort of. Um, scenery that you can believe in. I mean, it, it sounds contradictory to make something artificial and by that trying to be authentic, but I think that's really the, the way to do it, because if you, like, if you try to be very authentic, you end up being very boring. <laughs> so, so I really tried to invent some things that astonish the spectator, that you're not so much used to see when you see a historical film. So I want to like question the expectations of the spectator. 
And to use a dog, um, I mean, I hadn't thought about it before, but obviously that is astonishing for the spectator to see how well educated the dog is and that he's in nearly every scene. And in some of the important scenes, you see the back of the head of Vogel, but you see the face of the dog. <laughs> so he's actually interpreting emotionally what you see. Um, that's a funny thing to do, and it's also about trying to to create some sort of reality. Uh, there is a little uh, touch of humor in the movie. Yes. Uh, it was always there? Or? Yes. That was the reason to make the film. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, because um, I don't feel tragic about suicide. I mean, the fact that you have to die in the end anyway yeah. is very obvious to me. So people who want to shorten their life and want to die earlier, why not? I mean, I, I don't blame them. So actually, I tried immediately, if I make this film about double suicide, of course, to not judge it moralistically, but to give you a very light and even humorous impression. Maybe it's also about a special, about a, a strange taboo in our society. You're actually not supposed to say that you prefer to die than to live. Everyone would say, why? I don't understand. So I, I like to say it because of that, because it says our society is very much concentrated on living well, living long, living in beauty, living in richness. And, and so I'm interested in saying, what the heck, let's, let's say tomorrow it's possible to die. In the movie there are an aspect uh, more political too, it was important to... Uh, yes. To put yes. it in. It, at the 19th century or beginning of the 19th century was a, a time where the, the ideas changed a lot. Until that time people used to live in a, in a monarchy and the aristocracy was very powerful and had very many rights and privileges and the other people <laughs> had nothing. Yes. <laughs> That's very simple. And um, after the French Revolution, of course, also in Germany, things started to change. And that, that was a big movement, I think. And it was the movement that also is important for us now, because our society is based on democracy. And at that time, actually, it started in a way earlier. But I chose this um, to, to, like, to have this political discussion in the film because it also shows that what you think is right might change and something that was right yesterday is wrong tomorrow. That is a very important thing to know. Uh, I read that uh, Heinrich uh, uh, goes to French army uh, in a part of his life. And, uh, the real character, you mean? Yes, yeah. the real character. And when the when he learned that uh, her, her, co her cousin in the in the movie he will be married to a friend yes is not uh, is not happy so yeah. what do you think of that of that parallel i mean uh Can I say to that um, the fact that he 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 um, the whole uh, like the whole um, aspect of the real character Heinrich von Kleist, what he did and in, that he was in the war and what happened to him, is not part of the movie. So it's hard for me now to make a relation because there is not. <laughs> it's just not in the movie and. And what you see in the scene when when um, his cousin yeah. tells him that she's going to marry a Frenchman, it's of course to like to create a situation where he does not get what he wanted to get. It's, um, besides that, this cousin, in reality, she did marry another guy. So that was of course inspired from the real events of his life, but. Um, 
but the way it is put in the film now is really very much focused on the fact that I wanted to have this sort of permanent um, 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 de deception of what he wished. Um, so uh, at the end of the movie, we can see he killed uh, Oriette and um, we don't see him, uh, we don't see his suicide. Well, why? Uh, ah, we don't uh, see the suicide. Yeah. yeah, well, it's always better not to show <laughs> the, 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 the most interesting scenes because that, I think that's an old rule of cinema that um, the fantasy of the spectator is much worse than anything you could show. The spectator. I don't know if you have that feeling in horror films. If you see finally the monster, you're disappointed. <laughs> so um, it's probably because of that. It's also a question of rhythm that um, you see the whole preparation. You see how he shot her. Yeah, you yeah. see that the pistol doesn't try, work try. twice. <laughs> so the most interesting thing, of course, is to cut away the moment you could actually see what happens. It was always a choice, so to don't show it. I think we didn't shoot it, no. It was always a choice. Okay. Yeah. And to finish, uh, what is your next project? Um, I'm starting to think about it, but it's not really very... There is not very much that I could say yeah. by now. I just, I just start to develop something, I do uh, research, I try to find my black humor in it, so I'm just doing the first steps. Okay. Too early to say something. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>